After a number of attempts spread over quite a while, I finally got two of these little guys, peppermint shrimp larva, to settle. That's uh, Lismata vertimani. In this video, I'm going to mostly show their developmental stages. I've got some video from a couple days apart for the entire development. Um, but I'll also mention some things that I noticed behavior-wise or setup-wise that might be helpful. Uh, for a more comprehensive documentation over how this run was done, I'm going to have a thread at Reef to Reef, and I've got a little document that I was recording along the way with some of the notes as well. These larvae are about three hours old. They were collected from a spawn that was around 11.30 p.m. on July 14th, uh, probably over the next hour or so, by an airlift-powered larva collector that surface skims. Uh, it's available for free on Thingiverse if you want to print out the parts for it yourself. Um, but they were collected and then moved to a bucket kind of in the early a.m. hours. I fed them initially with Artemia nuclei, and there were, because of the bucket had already been going from another spawn collected, there were some copepods already in there. But at least in the first few hours of them being around, I didn't observe any eating. And this is, of course, a view under a microscope. But this is what they look like more of in person. Uh, to describe it, they're basically clear, but they have kind of faint horizontal striping that's difficult to make out the color of. Um, they're a little bit smaller than larva from uh, other Lismata shrimp that are commonly kept, the skunk and uh, fire cleaners, um, but pretty similar in form. This next video is from about a day and a half later, so this is kind of middle of day two. And you can see that morphologically they are a bit different. Um, the kind of, I don't know, what I think of now as characteristic eye stalks sticking out to the side are quite a bit more pronounced than before. They've also got a little bit more of the, the antennae in the front of them. I don't know if it's actually still called the antennae in this zoea stage. But you can also see their tail is like a little bit fanned out as well. Not a whole lot more color, I guess a somewhat more slender and like a little bit bent body, um, but clearly distinct from when they were freshly hatched. This is now two days later, so day four, and you can see that they're approximately the same as they were. This is a little bit more zoomed in than the last one. Um, I wanted to mention that you can kind of see they're, they're swimming around with their legs, and they're kind of like jabbing their hands around quite a bit. So these guys will eat by grabbing onto something, holding it under them, and then kind of picking the parts off of it. Um, that means they can actually take on pretty large food, um, and they'll grab onto a lot of different kinds of things. I fed them only live foods, but I've heard, maybe not as early as this stage, but in later stages, they can be fed prepared foods, like, pretty readily. I stayed away from it because with my bucket set up, it would foul the water really quickly. Still the same day, but... I guess it's worth mentioning here that this is now uh, one water change in using a 2.5 gallon bucket with kind of low aeration and uh, plant warming, a uh, seedling warming blanket around it for heat. Um, so very low maintenance aside from the feeding so far. Um, but I have had one die off in the course of this. Not a huge number of them, but probably went down by about a third or a quarter of total numbers. And this is three days after the last one, and this is the stage I call the long leg stage. Um, you can see there's actually two different zoea stages in, in the frame here. Um, one of them, well, both of them have long legs, but one of them has these two little paddle legs, which will get even longer and even more pronounced as they grow. Um, it seems like there is a stage where their swimming legs grow out and they look visibly different even by eye, and then the stage after that where they start developing those two the paddle legs, but they don't use them for paddling, they use them more like rudders. Um, this will be like a primary feature in the later stage larva. They basically act the same as they always have. Um, they just look a little bigger because the legs are easier to see, you know, with your eyes. You can also see a little bit more forking in the tail and in the uh, antennae portion. And uh, another two days later, this is the start of their ninth day, you can see that they've, they've all developed the little oar paddles below. Not nearly as long as they'll eventually get, uh, but they're not all there. Um, you can also see, and this has been true the entire time, they're pretty strongly phototactic. They will always go towards the light, and with a bright enough light shined at them, they'll actually swim circles in a very confused and kind of hilarious looking fashion. Um, so you, 
you can use this to your advantage when you collect them because they will always swim toward it. You can also use it to your, to your advantage when you're observing them. Um, but you do want to limit stray light from the sides of the container in particular because multiple sources of light or too bright of a source of light will confuse the kind of direction they're going to go. And this is another two days later. And you can see they're a little bigger and a little lankier. Their eyes have stalked out a little bit more and the stalks themselves are kind of a little thinner looking. They also look uh, a little more translucent than transparent in the body and I think that's just the kind of slowly developing tissue and thickness of them. Uh, it was unfortunate in raising them. This was shortly after like a relatively big die-off. Um, at this point I went from hundreds of larvae still remaining to a uh, few dozen larvae still remaining. And while mm, by no means did all of those survive still, this was kind of the biggest percentage reduction that I saw during the whole thing. Another three days on, so this is the start of day 14, and they look still lankier. Uh, a little bigger, a li little thinner, um, a little bit more coloration, a little bit more non-transparency. Um, the light reflects off them to so make them look noticeably larger than in previous things when they're, they're swimming around in the tank, but when you put them under the microscope you can see about the same amount of them. Um, but they're, they're going along. Another two days, a little bigger, slightly more alien looking. You can see their, their legs, their swimming legs are a little bit more pronounced, um, but basically the same features as they had before. Looks like the front antennae are starting to get a little bit longer now too. Uh, this is not as far as they get, it's <laughs> they get still longer and lankier looking as they go. Um, but this is approximately what the larvae will look like before settling as well. And this is the next day, um, so they look about the same. But uh, it's noteworthy because I saw a difference in behavior. They started grabbing onto things. Uh, so it's kind of the first signs of benthic behavior. And you can see the ones swimming around there. And when the focus regains, you can see a couple of them clinging to the airline tubing that goes down into the middle and gives that very low aeration that I was using in this bucket. Um, so this is the kind of first sign that they were like on their way towards settling, though I found that it was actually still a ways out from it, where it was. Um, that's kind of the two ways they like to swim, one with their legs folded under them, only happened in the last few days, and one with their legs kind of extended out behind. Now, two days later, this is another shot of them under the microscope. Of course, a little bit more red, slightly gaudier overall, I think a little bit longer, and uh, the reason why is because I actually had to zoom out the microscope a little bit at this point to get more in the frame. Um, but basically, the same form, basically the same behavior, except they eventually stopped clinging onto things, and I'm not exactly sure why that is, but there was a day or so where the, several of them would latch onto things, and then subsequent days I didn't see anything, not for like another week. Another two days later, and another level zoomed out of the microscope. This is actually the same container that they've all been in. It's just now you can see the whole container because they're getting bigger. And that's an Artemia nauplii, or not super early nauplii swimming around next to it. Uh, in any case, uh, I was down to six larvae at this point. I had been kind of slowly losing a few individuals here and there for the last week or so. Um, and in the last couple of days, the AC had actually gone out on some rather hot days. Um, and I hoped for the best. I unplugged the heaters and they seemed to do okay. I don't think the temperature change actually affected them too much. Even though they probably got to around 29 Celsius, maybe 30 in the, in the buckets. So this is the next day, but this is the first time I saw that kind of clinging behavior resumed. And you can see that the larva that's on there now has really, really long antennae in the front. And I found that this was like the last big visual indicator that they're changing before full settlement, where they look totally different again. But this look of the larva with the kind of really long paddle legs and the antennae out of the front um, is like the last look they have. And when they're swimming around still, this is, you know, more of the, the format that they do. Usually with the legs kind of curled under them, or I guess curled over them, because they almost always swim head down and then tail first towards the lip thing. It's uh, a little unusual, but that seems to be how they do it.
the following day under the microscope again. This is August 8th, so this is about three and a half weeks in, and I think this is basically what the, uh, that same look of the larva we saw in the last video with the really long visible antennae. And you can see that the paddle uh, arms that they have uh, really have like kind of sharpened to a point almost. They look a little bit more like a, like a butter knife now than just a paddle, um, but it doesn't seem like their function's any different. another two days after the last one. Uh, I think this is a slightly bigger individual, but you can kind of see all the same characteristic things. The little bright points on the end of the antenna going forward, the uh, flippers with the uh, rudders, whatever you're going to call them, uh, look like they're changing color to be slightly yellowish, which did have that look by eye as well. And perhaps the behavior is like a little different, just in they're not quite as spasmodic, they're kind of holding their walking legs a little bit more like they'll eventually walk with them, um, but not all that specifically different here. I was just kind of holding my breath and hoping, hoping something would settle. Then, on the morning of August 12th, uh, about day 28, I had my first juvenile settle out, and that's what I was greeted to. Little guy stuck to the side. And this is one of its siblings, uh, same day, actually. Um, so this is probably very late stage as far as they go. About the same as last time, really. But this is the first settled juvenile. And you can see, morphologically, totally different. I don't know where the, the oar legs went on the back. Like, they look kind of like the farthest back ones because they look the strongest, but it looks like they just totally fell off. And the hugely stalked out eyes from before basically folded into a Y shape and became most of its head. Uh, the whiskers are also noticeably longer and don't have really the same colors as the previous ones at all. And uh, by the look of it, there's a little bit of pink to him, but he's mostly clear at this point. Very little of the peppermint strip look you're eventually going to expect. To further emphasize that difference, this is the two of them the next day. You can see that the settled larva is noticeably more red, and that the unsettled larva is noticeably larger and surprisingly yellow, and somehow in the course of a single molt, in the case of less than 12 hours between when I observed the, the one before it settled and after. Um, it completely changes shape and completely changes activity. No longer attracted to the light, no longer swimming around. After a couple days with no new shrimp settling and with the water slowly getting a little bit dirtier, I decided I'd move the last two unsettled larvae in with the settled one uh, in a little holding tank that I have in an aquarium. And this is their behavior when they're holding onto the walls. And I think this behavior was largely missing in the bucket. Um, it makes me wonder that if the next time I attempt this, I'll actually put in some kind of textured vertical surface for them to land on in the last few days before settlement, um, because it might be important for them to have something to grab onto. It might have been difficult to grab onto either the tube or the smoother walls of the tank that I was keeping them in. And my guess is that if they grab onto the bottom, that's probably not good for them because they'll get, they'll get tangled up with the grime that's kind of down there. Um, but this is them fully splayed out and ready to settle, but not quite yet. And this is the second shrimp settled, and unfortunately the last shrimp settled, only got two out of the batch. Um, but you can see, almost colorless just after settling, um, but acting like the real thing. Kinda hiding in the corners, trying to stay out of the light, uh, got all the whiskers, got the folded in eyes, even though the day before the eyes were three or four times as far apart. This is from August 18th, which is five weeks after they first hatched, and a day after the second one settled. So this is the second one. It's got a little bit of color to it now. Uh, it also just molted. So there's apparently a molt that happens as they settle, obviously to get rid of the, the ores and the other features from the larvae, and then one that happens very shortly after that, which is, as far as I can tell, basically the same size as the last one. Uh, but interesting. That same shrimp, another day later, is the one on the second level here. 
And as a sense of scale, these are approximately, or not approximately, they're actually six millimeters between uh, facing internal sides. Uh, and you can see the one that settled first down below, looking a little darker in color and maybe slightly bigger, and the one that settled second, the one that was in the last video on the second level there. And acting like normal peppermint shrimp, hiding in caves during the day and almost never coming out. <laughs> Two more days along. They're exploring a little bit more, but they really don't seem to have any intention with interacting with each other. Which is interesting. You never really know with new larvae whether they'll get along or whether they'll fight, but at least these two take very little notice of each other. <laughs> the next day, briefly cohabitating, bickering maybe, but pretty much getting along. It seems like they get along. Another day again. Here they are showing basically zero interest in food being given to them. I've been feeding these two since they settled mostly frozen food, just the same what I feed my tank. Um, there is some particulate food and pellets that are kind of mixed in with that, but I'm trying to aim for giving them the fines because I think that's probably going to be what's most appetizing and it's going to be best like portion size. Uh, a single mice shrimp, just as a comparison, is in some cases, like especially if you went with PE mice, just larger than the entire animal here. So you want the little, little shreds of things, and that seems to be sufficient. And here they are today, just shy of six weeks old, uh, from when they were hatched and one day since the previous video, you can actually see that the one on the left here, uh, the f first one to settle, is noticeably larger than the other one, and noticeably larger than it was before. And there was a molt overnight here, and I think this is probably its second molt from being a juvenile, since the first one happened so, far, so uh, soon after they first settle. Um, but it seems like this is the molt where they really, like, start to get bigger. They've got the full adult colors and striping. It's harder to see like this, but when they position themselves kind of horizontal, you do see the normal striping you'd expect out of a permanent shrimp. And of course, they're acting just like adults. Um, so it's just a matter of growing them to a size where they're not going to get eaten by everything else that's curious in the tank. Looking forward to it. So that's almost six weeks of development from hatch to settling and then a little bit of peppermint shrimp. This guy is the younger one of the two, the second one to settle, and as a sense of scale, that's one of the Red Sea water test kit files. So, still pretty small.